Hey, welcome to another edition of Avid Golfer Magazine's Drive Time Feature. Now, we all know there's no shortage of premium SUVs out there, people haulers, taking stuff, but you want to do it in style, you want to do some luxury, maybe a little bit of performance. So what did Volvo do to keep up with that hefty competition? Well, they came out with the 2021 T8 XC90 inscription, got to get this right, six seat recharge. What the heck does that mean? Well, we're going to let you know. By the way, thanks to Crest Cars up in Frisco, specifically Crest Volvo in Frisco for the use of this fine machine. And let's take, let's take a real hard look at why this thing will make your head turn. All right, one of the toughest things to do for a designer of an SUV is to make it look attractive. The bottom line is you want to hold a lot of cargo, you want to have some good headroom, but you want to make it look kind of sexy. Somehow Volvo did it, and they kind of followed it in the IKEA line, where it's kind of like a minimalistic luxury. Um, it just looks classy. So let's talk, the, talk about the front. A lot of chrome. Now, chrome isn't quite as, of, uh, as popular as it used to be, but on this car, it looks perfect. And especially in this white, I think it looks wonderful. You have the chrome here, chrome here. You have blacked out vents here that actually work to have to cool off the engine, right down there. These Hammer Thor of Light, they're one of the most striking features on this car. It just, it's, it's a great uh, accessory. It's a great styling point specifically for Volvo and they've kept this around for a while and for good reason. Okay, one of the benefits of having a luxury car, car manufacturers are finally realizing that good looking rims, good looking wheels, are kind of like the perfect accessory for a nice looking ride. It's kind of like if you have a great looking suit, but you have crummy shoes, it doesn't fit. So you want to have something that befits the rest of the car. And these 21 inch alloy wheels are fantastic because they're chrome on the outside, but they're blackened on the inside. So it hides all that brake dust that gets to be kind of a nuisance. But I think it fits the wheel wells nicely. Uh, these are all seasons, and uh, and they're incredibly uh, smooth as well. Even though they're 21 inches, when I'm on the road, I don't feel a, a jarring ride at all, which somehow uh, Volvo was able to engineer into their ride. Okay, this is the hybrid model, and what that means is there's actually two, not one battery, two batteries that help bring the uh, the horsepower to uh, 400 and brings the torque up to 472 pound uh, feet. And that is incredible for a two liter four cylinder engine. Think about that. So this is where the hybrid plugs in right here. You can even go on a one, 120 outlet. Just takes a little bit longer. But, uh, and what that does is you can drive this car with only the battery for 18 miles if that floats your boat. But the one thing you'll know when you, you'll find that out when we start driving this is how quiet everything is. I mean, it is church quiet. And something to be said for something like that, if you like to cruise in opulence and with, with no wind noise or anything, and you still have a 400 horsepower capability. All right, the nice sight lines from the side and the front continue towards the rear. It's a nice tidy rear. Doesn't look all bulbous or anything. Again, it's a little bit more um, chrome to accentuate the trim. I think it's a good look. And uh, I just think Volvo did a heck of a job. You got dual exhaust on the bottom, always nice. And then the trunk is actually one of the biggest in the midsize SUV class. So, got my clubs here, I can fit them sideways. I can also put them this way. If I put down all the seats, it's 85 cubic feet of space. That's the largest in its class. And, uh, and you can also fold down the headrest so you can see a little bit better. But it's great. I mean, I just, the interior especially, it makes me smile every time. Volvo has thought of everything for the comfort of their passengers. And the looks, too. Alright, let's take a look at this sumptuous interior. A lot of room, a lot of high-end materials, and you could sit in the back seat for a heck of a long time and never feel scrunched or cramped or anything else. So, <clears throat> these seats that Volvo designed took seven years in the making and they got everything right. It's, they're almost like a, a, a zero gravity seat where you don't feel any pressure anywhere. You're almost like you're floating. 
feels great feels great on your back the seats in the back are heated in the inscription model it's a great thing to have you can also adjust the controls down here <clears throat> i can almost i mean i have so much room back here i mean i can put my feet underneath i can i i can sleep back here quite honestly <clears throat> you have a double pane panoramic roof up here and look at this wood this wood is kind of like a bleached oak it i it's subtle but it's classy it's just everything that's right about this car you also have a lot of headroom even with this sunroof which usually drops everything down look at how much room i have that's with a hat on it's pretty darn good but again you can also get this in bench seats the reason they offer the the bucket seats is though so that uh, if you have multiple car seats for kids you can, it's easier to strap them in um, separately in these bucket seats than put it on a bench seat. So it's a good idea either way. It lets people have options, and options are always good. All right, let's take a look at the front seat. This is where all the fun happens. I'm going to start this up. Okay, outside of that bell, do you hear anything? If I turn down the climate, it's like it's quiet. It's very quiet. And this is a 400 horsepower engine. So, once you get this thing on, and you know it's on, then your instrumentation pops up. Um, you can <clears throat> set your heated steering wheel in three different temperature modes, which is really cool. And you got three different uh, uh, seat heating modes as well. And these th things do get toasty after a while. So, again, it gives you the option. The steering wheel feels really good. <clears throat> again, all this really good leather. Uh, everything looks upscale, but a minimalistic, classy type of way. I've mentioned that several times, but it's the best way to think about it. It's like Ikea stepped up two or three notches. I love this wood. Um, I love this soft. It's almost like an Alcantara, Alcantara type leather. I like that as well. Um, the seats, as I mentioned, the back seats are perfect. And you can adjust the lumbar by doing this. I'll show you right here. If I can, it has massage. I can do lumbar here, what they call side bolsters. I can make them go in or out, and they can kind of hug me a little bit more. You can also do raise or lower the seat. The massage feature is really cool. You can, <clears throat> you have several different settings. I don't know what swell is, but it feels pretty good. You can also get tre tread, advanced, lumbar, can change the intensity you can change the speed and it's for the driver and the passenger comes in handy after a long round of golf I use it a lot the vents are excellent uh, the instrumentation is good everything is easy to see uh, <clears throat> again you can voice activate if you'd like uh, I use it sometimes I don't um, I kind of like everything hands-on but here in the console area here's a couple things this is like a crystal gear shift Nice touch, right? I like it. Here's kind of a quirky thing though. And if I wanted to put that in drive, I don't hit it once. I have to hit it twice. Same thing when I go in reverse. I don't just go up to reverse. I have to hit that twice because you have to bypass the neutral. Kind of interesting. But um, you can always hit park right here. The engine start and stop is right here. You twist this to turn it on or off. It has different drive modes. I can have constant all-wheel drive. I can do in pure eco mode. I can do everyday hybrid, which is part battery, part uh, engine. Power is all engine, but it gets a boost from the batteries to get it up to 400 horsepower and 472 pound-feet of torque. And that's how that works. Um, other than that, this is the big deal. This is kind of like their, it's kind of like an iPad. It's like a tablet. So I, this is my home screen. If I want to go to other settings, I scroll this way. I can uh, keep. I can put lane keeping aid, which means if you start to veer a little bit, it'll bring you back in. You have park assist. I have a camera here. I can either uh, zoom in. I can do my favorite is the 360, so I can get an overhead shot. So if I'm in a tight space, um, I can really see through the lines how uh, how close I'm getting to something. I think it's an awesome feature. Uh, you go back to. Uh, Head up display, we'll show you in a little bit. So you have the, you can have nav up there. You can have the speed, you can have the speed limit. And you also have a directional uh, uh, turn by turn, which is, I love this because it keeps my eyes on the road. 
far as this goes, the only thing you have to be prepared for is you have to look down here to change things. So best to do it when you're at a stop because when you're driving and your eyes are down here, maybe not the best idea. If you go over here, this gives you the different bands, FM, Sirius, Bluetooth. What's missing? AM radio. What? So what you have to do there is you have to download the software to get AM frequency. Kind of interesting there. You can change the sound experience. I can change it to which seat. Do I want the driver to hear the best? Everybody, maybe just the rear. I can change the surround sound if I want that. Change the tone. It's, it's the Harman Kardon uh, stereo. It's the upgrade. Sounds perfect. Um, if I want to change the temp, I just slide this up and down. I can also do a voice activated. My hands on guy, I don't use voice activated very much. But uh, you can also sync it up too. So that's pretty much the front. The um, it also has a wireless charger here, which does work. What, what's wonky though is if you have an iPhone 12 Pro or 12, even Apple has uh, admitted that their wireless charging on, for some reason, on, on this phone is not awesome yet. It still has quirky stuff. So it's not a, a Volvo problem, it's an iPhone problem. They're hoping to rectify that. But again, very handy right here. I don't like a lot of cords and a lot of clutter. So this is perfect. You have some good storage under here. A uh, decent amount. I can put my masks and everything else in there. Feels good. Again, the materials are excellent. You have some nice contrast stitching. The seats are excellent. They're heated and cooled which uh, is no small feat. A lot of cars just have ventilated, they're just blowing air. This has cooled seats and it works magnificently. You put that with massaging or the heat, you're in. You have three different memory settings for your, uh, for your driver's seat, also for your passenger seat too. So you have somebody that's in that seat constantly, um, they can make that, uh, tailor make that any way they want. It's pretty sweet. You have a little more storage down here for some knickknacks and stuff. Um, you can move this back. And you have a 12 volt. Sexy whoa! You have a 12 volt uh, plug-in right there. Um, you can use that for a multitude of uses. And uh, I'm gonna say that's pretty much it. We're gonna give you some close-in shots of what everything looks like. But this lays it out again. It it's very touch tone oriented. You're not gonna get it any other way. If I want to do this in in uh, for the nav, I can. It's almost like an iPad. I can pinch it. I can make it really small. I can make it bigger. So, and that way I really like that. Again, you're gonna get the directions on the on the head-up display as well. But uh, but it's all touch screen. You can do some voice activated, but see what it says right here. Wireless charging, not active. That's an iPhone issue, not a Volvo issue, so be aware of that. Key fob's okay. It's nice and small. It's not big and, you know, bulky that sits in your pocket and looks ridiculous. This is nice and streamlined. I like it. And uh, the uh, headlights are incredibly bright, so at night, works out really well. It's also turning, they also adjust when you turn. It's a good feature as well. And uh, everything else is, is pretty much what you get. I mean, it's, it's laid out very nicely. Um, it, gets about, uh, it gets about 20 overall, uh, mileage wise. Helps a little bit with the battery. Uh, but the battery main focus is not gas mileage, it's power. It adds power to a 2.0 liter engine. It's only a four cylinder, but with the two batteries on there, uh, gets it up to 400 horsepower and 472 pound feet of torque. Those are not small numbers at all. And it feels good, it feels seamless when you're driving. We'll talk about that when we get behind the wheel and start this puppy up and take, go for a test drive. All right, showing you the inside, the outside, top, bottom, back. See how this thing drives because ultimately this is what's going to make or break your decision on buying this car. <clears throat> the roads here, Las Colinas, Texas, are some of the worst ever. Potholes are terrible. So how does this car ride with big 21 inch alloy rims and the suspension? One thing I've noticed, as I mentioned before, the seats are incredibly comfortable. I mean, they're supportive. You can change the side bolstering, change the lumbar, you can change the seat position, the, the real seat position. It's wonderful. I never have any any points of stress while driving this. That's a, that's a big design plus, as far as I'm concerned. Steering wheel, 
for a $70,000 car, it's a little tricky. You have to manually change the tilt and telescopic adjustments on it. There's no electric. It's all manual. I found that interesting. But it's a slight dig. It's nothing. But once you get it done, it's, you'll never think about it again. So it's not a big whoop. Visibility. Should be gridden in an SUV, and this one is no different. Big windows all the way around. You have visibility through the B pillars, C pillars. That's great. Now, with these different modes we're talking about, let's put it in. If we put it in constant all wheel drive, you're really not going to notice anything unless it's slippery conditions ice, rain, snow, mud. But when you put it in, let's say we'll try it in eco mode here. That's where it's mostly battery operated. It'll it'll turn off the uh, your engine when you're uh, when you're not driving. Saves you a little bit of gas mileage. I, by the way, I was I was incorrect. This gets overall 27 miles a gallon, which is pretty good for a hefty ride like this. It can also tow up to 5,000 pounds. Again, with the two extra batteries that help boost the power and the torque. Now you're at 472 pound feet of torque. 5,000 pounds. That's a good number to. Uh, be able to drag behind you. You can hear it's different too. Sounds very electronic. It sounds like a boom. Almost like Tron. So you got that. It starts off in second gear, so you don't use a lot of gas. If, if I put it down in the hybrid, now that's your everyday use, kind of like comfort mode. Use a little bit of battery, a lot of the engine. If I put it in power mode. Now it's sporty driving. Now the only time you use the battery is when you want that extra boost in power for acceleration. The 0 to 60 times are pretty good, but you never feel like if I punch this, it's quick. I mean, this thing moves. Woo! Oh, and the other thing with Volvo, <clears throat> when it feels any sense of impact, this thing grabs you hard. So you're not going to be flying out of the windshield or anything, and then it'll loosen up when, uh, when you come to a stop. But man, that thing grabbed really hard, but... Again, that's, some, that's a, a nice control feature, and it gives me really good peace of mind if I'm worried about hitting something and I want to stay in my seat. You can also do it if you happen to roll it. it it's very good that way. So, touche Volvo for keeping me safe and sane. Uh, as far as the other features, it, um, it drives like a, a really nice luxury appointed SUV. Again, only four-cylinder, 2.0-liter engine, and you get 400 horsepower and 472 pound-feet of torque. That's huge in getting that uh, from that small an engine. Again, the batteries help, but it's a uh, it's a nice option for you. Uh, I feel everything is is nice and simple yet elegant. Uh, I love the way they did it. It's kind of like IKEA, but maybe a couple steps above that. Uh, you this this uh, light leather looks great and gives the a cabin a more airy feeling to it again the other thing you gotta you gotta think about though is anytime I want to change something outside of using voice control I have to go to the screen and I have to drop my eyesight down here a little bit so in order, so in order I hit the right function or where I want to go so best to do it when you're not driving um, unless you know where everything is you can make quick adjustments not a deal killer by any stretch. It's just that there's no control knob down here on the console that lets you be redundant in all of your choices. You have to pretty much go through the screen or you have to do a voice command. Uh, the sound system is excellent. The Harman Kardon is a great up, uh, upgrade to that. And as I showed you earlier, you can change the the sound settings. You make a surround sound, you can make it uh, emphasize the driver, everybody, or maybe just the rear seats. So it all works in harmonious detail. And the side view mirrors are nice and large. They also fold in if you'd like, uh, especially if you're going into a kind of a tight space or a garage. That works out well. Can't say, uh, I can't say enough good things about this car. It's really nice. Now, it's a price point. The inscription, you can get it for less. You can get momentum, which is more of a base. You can get a T5. The T6, the T8 is their is their highest level, along with the inscription. 
So this base is at 70. You can get it for less than this. But once you start adding all the features and everything and the options, this thing right now is $78,000. So in line with a lot of the other luxury mid-size SUV imports. It's not outlandish by any stretch. It just depends if you're the type that has to have a V6 or has to have a V8. Uh, once you punch this with the two extra battery boosts, uh, you're not going to be wanting for extra power. Or if you want some extra noise. Some people like that exhaust noise to it. It really just depends. Um, and, you know, there's, that's why there's so many options out there. But this one is popular. This one gets an excellent safety rating because that's what Volvo is all about. It doesn't look like a refrigerator on wheels anymore. It looks downright sexy and classy. So Volvo has removed that crazy stigma. Uh, well, it was well, it was well deserved back in the day, but now it's something to be proud of. You can walk, you can drive up to any high class situation, the country club. The valet is going to get you. Wow, this is a nice ride. And uh, you know, if you're spending that kind of money, you kind of want that money back a little bit, I think, right? So all in all, big pluses on this. It's the Volvo T8 inscription model. It's plug-in, and uh, it's all-wheel drive. XC90. I didn't get that. I didn't get that <laughs> that phrase in the right order. I'm sure, but I hit all the high points, and that's all you really need to worry about. So check out this uh, XC90 T8 at uh, at if you're in Texas at Crest Cars, Crest Volvo up in Frisco. And I want to thank you again for your time. Well, there you have it. Upscale, top of the line Volvo SUV, premium SUV. It's called the T8 XC90. It's the inscription model. And it also is a plug-in hybrid. So it gives you surprising power, a lot of room, luxury appointments, and a really cool design. It bases at 70 grand. This one costs 78,000. And again, thank you to the people over at Crest Cars, specifically Crest Volvo, for their use of this ride. Until next time, happy driving.